How does this internal treaty concretely help parties to make advance the transboundary water cooperation? And more concretely, maybe what, what happens in the case of tension or conflicts between the parties? Uh, what is your role in such situation? So in contrast to the United Nations Water Courses Convention of 1997, the UNIC Water Convention has an institutional framework which consists of um, the meeting of the parties uh, as well as subsidiary bodies um, such as working groups, uh, task forces, um, expert groups, um, etc. And um, also uh, the Secretariat which is located at UNICE. And through this framework um, parties and also non-parties are assisted through uh, capacity building, uh, exchange of experience, um, projects on the ground, regular assessments um, uh, and, um, and other activities such as policy advice or guidance uh, development. So, uh, for example, uh, we work in a number of transboundary basins, uh, uh, especially in those uh, where it was problematic situations, for example, in conflict prone or water scarce regions. Um, and there we support the riparian countries to um, uh, negotiate a transboundary agreement uh, to set up or to strengthen existing institutions for the management of these waters um, or to, for, to do more technical work such as exchange data and uh, uh, work on dam safety and other issues. Um, for example, we work in Central Asia, which is, as we all know, quite a uh, difficult region when it comes to water management <laughs> and um, there we helped um, uh, in the Tutalas Basin which is uh, shared by Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, the countries, we helped them to conclude an agreement um, and to set up an institution and uh, commission for the transboundary water management in that basin. And um, or also from Central Asia we uh, support the cooperation between Afghanistan and Tajikistan, um, which is politically a difficult region, um, and we help them to negotiate a memorandum for hydrological data exchange, uh, to do joint expeditions, uh, and um, to um, jointly reduce flood risks in the basins. So um, this shows the approach of the convention, which is uh, to um, as much as possible try to prevent conflicts uh, before they even escalate uh, by supporting the cooperation. Mm -hmm. However, when there are real difficulties or tensions, there are also certain mechanisms under the Convention which can help. For example, um, the countries can turn to the so-called Implementation Committee, mm -hmm. uh, which was created just um, in 2012. Um, and um, it um, aims to promote and safeguard the implementation and application of the Convention. Um, it's um, non-confrontational, non-adversarial, um, transparent and uh, supportive mechanism, uh, which, as I say, countries can turn to. It is composed of um, nine elected members, um, which serve in their personal capacity, and that includes some lawyers, but also experts um, uh, practicing transboundary cooperation on the ground. And um, parties um, can um, turn to this committee f with requests for advice, uh, with problems, um, with sort of so-called submissions, um, mm, party to party submissions, or also when the committee sees problems or problems of implementation and compliance somewhere, then uh, the um, committee can take its own initiative to address uh, such a situation. Um, but in addition to um, this implementation committee, as I said, there are also a number of other bodies under the convention uh, where um, parties in, uh, when their attentions can uh, address uh, for advice and, for example, also the secretariat if needed. Mm -hmm. And um, this is how we try to, to assist them.